my reaction to the Tucker interview with Putin of Russia. Putin. Not pudding. Putin. The interview dropped today. It was two hours long. And it started off with Tucker asking about why did Putin go attack Ukraine or what what happened what really happened and and this is this is interesting for those who might not know like what is Russia's perspective right or wrong whether you believe it or not why not try to get their side of the story I always talk about that when I talk about myself and my side of the story when it, whenever I talk about myself I talk about my my life I do that a lot but it's like on the world stage it's like people 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 can talk about Russia people can talk about China they they talk about these things as if they know like like the general public they act like they 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 know or they don't really care a lot of people don't really care but they act like they they're experts and everybody's like experts and so it's like a lot of times you don't really know and um let me talk with my hands because sometimes my face just doesn't cut it sometimes just listening to one person tell a story does not cut it and so it's like i feel like i i know a little bit already because i've been informed a little bit at least more now than before since about 2016 and I started listening to alternative news a little bit more a little bit more than before and so I've been I've been getting there and I've been talking about it and I've been keeping a blog and 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 I'm really interested in 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 that kind of thing in politics and history but for other people they might not be they might not be and so it's helpful it's educational for people to to listen to the other side and what they think whether whether they're right or wrong and so it's like the interview starts off with a, a history lesson so to speak and Vladimir Putin, he, he, he tries to tell the story of once upon a time there was a Russia country that came out of nowhere. Or maybe not out of nowhere, but that it came a long time ago. Like, what year was it? 862 or whatever. And he started building his case of, of the history of Russia and, and the borders of Russia. And the borders probably overlapped. Ukraine what what is Ukraine today and it's like it's like there are Russians in Ukraine and so I'm already like I'm already aware of that and so that wasn't shocking to me but it was interesting hearing some of that and then there was a few other a few other questions like what do you think about AI and he's like well we gotta we gotta like um, have some restrictions or else kind of thing we gotta be careful about that kind of thing we can't really stop it just like you can't stop people from having gunpowder and uh, there was a few other questions like will you release a, a reporter and and he said that uh, there are some negotiations going on, but perhaps he sort of just said, "Okay, he can go. He can go back home to America with you, Tucker." He didn't do that, at least not on on camera, not during the interview. So that might might have been the wrong decision for him but I think I understand 
I think I do understand because it's it's interesting that that uh so 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 Putin I always struggle with trying to say his name, but so uh he he says that that Bill Clinton said to him a while back, like back in two thousand, he said that Russia could not join NATO. And so the question would be, would would Russia join? And the answer would be, you know, like, perhaps you can negotiate. That's kind of like a Trump answer. It's a Trump thing to say. Okay? It's a Trump thing. Uh, it's like, it's the art of the deal. And it's like, of course, that's what you should do if you're in business and a country is a business in a way. And so it's like you got to negotiate, of course. Of course. You got to negotiate. And so uh, this interview is very historical. My my thoughts, my thoughts, my thoughts are probably all over the place. I know that I hear people say, don't trust Vladimir Putin. Putin, not Putin, Putin. How do I say his name? How do I say his last name? I always hesitate because I'm like, I'm not saying it right. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. You know what doesn't sound right? Not knowing the backstory to whatever, whatever goddamn thing you're talking about, whatever you're trying to talk about. A lot of people talk about things that they don't really know what they're talking about. Whether, whether they're talking about me or talking about anything in the world. You know? You know. And it's so easy to judge a book by its goddamn cover. And I'm not the first person to to say that, but uh and it goes without saying, but it's like it's like is there background noises in this video? There might be, unfortunately. But uh just want you to know that uh I've done a bad job telling my side of the story. And Tucker was saying after the interview that that Putin did, had a bad time telling his side of the story, explaining himself, and that he was in a position where he never had to for the last twenty years as the the leader of Russia doesn't really have to, you know, he's not in that position, doesn't really have to explain himself, you know, kind of thing, and that makes sense. It's it's a little bit unfortunate, uh, but it's like. That's kind of how things are. So people might say you don't want to trust him, the leader of Russia. He's a bad guy. He'll do a bad thing. He's a good guy or a nice guy. No, I don't know. But it's like people are going to say that because they're like, well, before he was a leader, before he was the president of Russia, uh, he he was in the he was in the Russian CIA or whatever it was, um, spying and stuff and. Um, that might be true, probably is true, but it's like, is he a bad guy? Does he do bad things? I don't know exactly, but based on what I've heard, I think that he's done a lot of good things to help Russia, and he does he doesn't want other countries and especially NATO to like get closer and closer, and they had like an agreement, but then it's like they opened the door like NATO opened the door or like the door was opened somehow in 2008 and then the, the conflict started like 2014 and and then he, like he talked about before that he talked about like like after World War II like there was a, like an, an agreement and that people the people the different powers that be in the different nations came to an agreement and that people should honor the agreements that the different nations had whether whether that was an agreement made in uh made in the United Nations or whatever it was um I forget the details maybe I never knew in the first place I forget but it's historical and it's like this is what this is what he said this is what uh, th these are some of the things that he was like like talking about in the interview for 2 hours and some of it is stuff that he's talked about before 
in other interviews and speeches and stuff that stuff that you might find from other people like Alex and a bunch of other people in in alternative media, uh, stuff that might be in books. And so there wasn't a lot of like new information, but the but one of the things that's interesting is how there's a lot of people out there who are like, "Oh, we got to they're like they're like we gotta we gotta lock up Tucker because he talked to somebody that we're at war with. It's like what we're at war with Russia invisibly like like we're not gonna say it, we're not gonna say it, we're just gonna do it they were uh they were talking about that on Tim cast, and I think that's interesting that that's what they do. the powers that be have evolved to this place where they're like we're not going to talk about it we're just going to do it we're just going to do it we're just going to go to war now in the back of my mind i'm thinking to myself i need to upload this video where do i upload this video where it doesn't get taken down uh, i think i'm gonna i'm gonna upload this video to youtube and make sure um it stays up or i'll forget about it and maybe maybe this video will not have a problem because I didn't talk about a lot of different things, uh, other things that that YouTube might not like. I don't know, but um, I get a little paranoid because I lost a lot of other channels, YouTube channels over the years that I've talked about so many times. It becomes difficult for a person like me. Uh, I'm the kind of person that's like split. Uh, in, in what I want to talk about, what I like, I feel like I don't want to really repeat myself, but uh, sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you you shouldn't do it, but you got to do it sometimes and um, explain yourself and depending on the situation. And, and I've gone back and forth, but I, I, I'm, I'm, believe it or not, I'm, I'm evolving. And that's a good, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing in a lot of ways, but uh, it's, it's been. It's been a ride. It, it's been challenging with everything that's going on. I'm not going to um, bore you with all the details of everything that's going on. There's probably other videos about that. About that. So I can bore you in the other videos and articles and everything. And uh, I'll, I'll bore the hell out of you in those videos. Uh, I'm not going to go long in this video. I just wanted you to know what was on the top of my head. Um, After listening after watching the the interview and my mind is heavy on it and there there was like a question that that Tucker asked him a few times um like multiple times at the end the last uh the last like 30 minutes or so the question was would you call up America and try to negotiate a peace deal since Ukraine is like a satellite state of of um, NATO and America? And America was funding NATO. You know, Trump talked about that, how how America like pays the bills and the other countries are supposed to pay the bills, but they're uh, delinquent. You're... you're how do I do a Trump impersonation? I don't think I can do it. But I can tell you, I think that's true. And and so so that was a question. The question is like, it's like, what's the question again? Like the question, what was the question? Uh, Tucker was asking him a few times, like, why not call up America and try to try to negotiate? And... And and Putin said that we're open, but what are we going to talk about? Like, because we already know, like, our side knows, their side knows, and it's like we're at a stalemate because everybody knows what the other person knows. Like, I know that you know this, and you know that I know this. So it's like, how can we talk about anything? Cause it's like a lot of a lot of politicians over the years, like especially in America, they're all talk and no action. And uh, I get no satisfaction from that. And so it's like, in in some ways, talk is valuable if you're talking to somebody like Trump. And then you can go somewhere. Just wanted to say that there's a lot of value in 
interviewing people and hearing both sides of the story or all the different sides of the story, whether you're Tucker or anybody else. And you got to do that. And it's like you want to hear people. But there's some people like on the left who are like, no, we don't we don't want to we don't want to hear this person or that person or this country, or that country, because it's like dangerous the ideas are so dangerous and it's going to get inside us and affect us. But it's like, that's pretty crazy. But it's understandable because that's the only way to control people is by keeping them from hearing good ideas. Because in the end, the good ideas are going to conquer. Love conquers. Good ideas conquer. And it's persuasive and it's contagious and you can't stop it. You just can't stop it. And so when the going gets tough, the best thing you can do is is uh educate like like you're part of the part of the school rock what's what what do they call that again? The school rock house school house school house rock. They're the cartoons, probably came from England from uh the nineteen seventies or after and I saw them as a kid. And it was very educational. One of the one of the songs that I remember is I'm only a bell and I'm on Capitol Hill. And and the song is all about how a bill becomes a law in America. I'm only a bill and I'm standing on Capitol Hill. And it's incredible because it's like it's entertaining. And it's uh, educational. But what do I know? I'm just a, uh, I'm just a, uh, I'm just an oatmeal. Those are basically my thoughts. I could probably like watch the interview and then like bore you to death with every single thought that I might have. But I think for now, I'm just gonna end it with this. Thank you for watching.